I'm gonna do a little walkthrough of my Hasbro HasLab uh, Spangler Series Proton Pack and Wand, which has been uh, weathered uh, to my tastes, uh, doing a lot of the standard stuff everyone else is doing. Um, but one of the things I've done is retrofitted all of the electronics inside. So all the controllers have been replaced. And so I'm gonna do a little walkthrough of what that looks like. So I'm gonna go into my breaker box here. I'm gonna turn on the uh, power to my talent cell battery. I've got a little check here to verify that the uh, DC buck converter is properly uh, stepping down from 12 volts to about 5.02. And this is feeding power to the pack, the wand, the audio controllers, basically everything, um, everything that I need. I've got some uh, toggles mounted in here. So I've got the direction uh, for the cyclotron, uh, Counterclockwise is down, clockwise is up. I've got mode, so up is the 2021 afterlife mode, down is your standard uh, OG 1984. Uh, since this is an afterlife pack, I just, I always run it in the uh, in that mode. And I've got a USB cable in here because yes, I'm running Arduino and I don't wanna have to open up the pack every time I need to do a software update so I can just throw an extension on here, plug it into my laptop and update the software. Uh, Power Cell has a uh, blue uh, theatrical uh, gel in it. I've, I forgot I had some of those, so it was an easy way to, to color that blue. A lot of people have been using like uh, DVD or Blu-ray packaging. Uh, all right, we're going to walk over here. All right, so the way this is set up is the activate switch will power everything up. So we got the, uh, the basics of the wand going, the cyclotron starts spinning, we got our boot up sound, and the Power Cell is powering. All right, so all pretty standard. And then for the uh, afterlife mode, this pretty mim pretty much mimics the movie. The lower uh, switch uh, from the point of view of operation uh, just increases the, uh, the hum on the, on the wand, turns on the vent light, and then once we flip the top one, we should start getting a little beep. Hopefully that's audible. I'm gonna turn down. I've got an extra volume control just for the uh, pack. Uh, so this has a built-in amp now. Uh, it's very minimal. It's only mono. Uh, there's a there's a little speaker that's actually mounted in the uh, the bottom of the gun box. So it's not directly in the speaker port. It's a little more full featured uh, because it is full range, and so it will really. Uh, it'll blast, um, uh, or it'll it'll vibrate this whole thing. Uh, so let's pull the uh, the wand off. I've got this set up with uh, 60 pound magnets, just so that uh, when I I throw this back up there, it hopefully stays put. We have the dial on the top. Uh, adjust the bar graph as expected. Steps it down. You get a nice little. Ch uh, chirp as it moves the bar graph up and down. Uh, we've got uh, levels one through four. We'll do a more reddish effect with the wand. And if you go all the way up to, you know, full stream, it goes a little more amber. So that was uh, pointed out as the standard for the 1984 movie. And so it pretty much uh, was what the uh, designer had gone with. And this is, by the way, this is the GP Star uh, electronic schematics that I followed. Uh, so if you've been following on GP fan, uh, GB fans, uh, GP Star, I think his name, uh, I, I haven't heard it pronounced, uh, Michael Rogette. Uh, that's the, this is all based on his plans. I took his schematics and was able to replicate his work. So this has an Arduino Nano and an Arduino Mega uh, sitting uh, right back here behind the, um, uh, the booster tube. All right, so this has all the usual bells and whistles that you would expect for most packs. Uh, we've got the uh, bar graph actually does something uh, a little closer to the movie. We have smoke effects. And the overheat sequence with the pent vent pack, or excuse me, pack vent 
There we go. So it does a nice little whoosh at the end. Whew. All right, so we can lift off the cyclotron lid. We get a nice little sound effect when that does so. That's the Taco Belly uh, design for the top of the cake and the panel as well. The LEDs, I didn't use the clip lights. Instead, I had found these all-in-one uh, low voltage uh, low voltage DC indicators that basically screw right in. Uh, they have a little nut on the back side of them. And so those just screw right in. The uh, smoke exits through the cone under the end filter. Uh, there is a 50 millimeter blower fan underneath of that. And that allows any smoke which is built up inside the end filter to be pushed out. I found that to be pretty effective. Uh, that again is also part of the uh, base design uh, by GP Star. He already has uh, pins defined and software that will automatically uh, run the fan at the right time during the uh, pack vent sequence. Yeah. Uh, we have all the video game modes, so I can switch and go into you know, stasis mode. I can do is that the uh, Mason? Oh, I think I accidentally skipped. Yeah, there's the slime mode. So it does it in order. It's the uh, proton stream, slime mode, stasis, and uh, Mason blast. Uh, there's an extra, so as it um, as it switches, you get one LED at the end will change color to indicate what mode you're on. And then the last, after you cycle through all those modes, we go into a special menu mode he built uh, into this. What's cool about this, uh, it starts off uh, using level five, so you have different menu levels affect different things, uh, mostly sound. So when we go to level one, we start playing music. So we press this button to start. We can press that button to stop. Uh, if I go up uh, to level two, that advances to the next track. So if I come back here, that should. Yeah, there we go. So we don't get the uh, copyright claim or anything, but uh, there's a little bit of music there. So I'm go back to number two, press that again, and we skip to the next track. And if I go to level three, uh, this go the mode button goes down. So that hopefully you heard the, uh, the music actually died down. So that level is the music volume. And we can press intensify to bring the menu, uh, volume back up. And if we go up to the next level, that one's neat because that will, that'll kill the sound effects. So basically you can stay in a jukebox mode, just playing the music while the rest of the lights on the pack keep doing their thing. And of course, if I wanna bring that back up, I just have to keep pressing the intensify button until the volume steps back up to normal. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this off, so I press, actually, let's do this. I'm gonna go back up to level five. Uh, that's a repeat, uh, repeat option. So basically, it'll keep looping the same track, but I don't want that on. Uh, so I just press this uh, intensify again, turns it off. Uh, we're gonna go back into the particle stream, proton stream, sorry. All right, so now if I cut off the wand and the pack, everything spins down, music keeps playing. What I can do now is I can adjust the volume using the dial on the top. Uh, I couldn't do that before because the dial is usually used to uh, move between the uh, menu levels. So, since that's tied to the bar graph, we, we use the uh, intensify and mode button for the, the, the up and down. Like I said, when it's in the, uh, when it's basically the wand and the pack are powered down, press the mode button, that puts you into the menu system. You can turn 
uh, go down to level one, you now have access to the uh, start stop for the music. I can skip tracks on level two. Uh, level three, four, uh, those are for volume, but since nothing's really running, uh, you're not going to hear any difference. Go back to level five, and now I can exit the menu, and basically the wand just sits idle. I can still power everything up. Uh, this comes back to whatever the last uh, level was for the bar graph. So if you left it at three, it comes back on three. So we'll shut that off. Power that up. There we go. Back to three. So the menu. We we have to go. Th we have to cycle through the modes. And the last one, we end up on the uh, menu mode. I could stop the track on level one of the menu, go back up to five, exit the menu, and now I'm back in the uh, standard firing mode. And there are all all the safeguards are in there. If the wand if the wand is retracted, we have to turn on the box, turn on the vent light, uh, get the beeping going. So all the switches have to be up. Still won't fire. We have to extend and then we can fire so all the usual expected uh, safeguards are in place so it should be uh, relatively accurate to the firing sequences everyone is used to like i said the uh the cyclotron is pretty cool i, I love this when you lift this off and automatically turns on all the lights inside. So these do not run when the lid is in place. So if we go back and line this up, there we go. We got a nice little click effect with a little sound effect and you see lights inside are no longer on. So it's a completely seamless switch uh, between the standard uh, lid lights and the inner cyclotron, whether the lid is on or off. Oh, we do have the, um, we do have the standard alarm. So if I, so if we take the ribbon cable off, uh, we have a slower climb on the power cell and we have the stuttering of the lights. And that's mainly the, uh, the effect. I think the uh, wand will not let me fire. Yeah, so the wand is in a no fire state. There we go, put the ribbon cable back on, uses the same switches that are already there. Power cell goes back to normal, everything spins up, and we can and we can fire again. So that is the, I think that pretty much is it for the walkthrough. Uh, this is using a, a CN Linko connector with ethernet. And it's on there good. So that's just a ethernet connector uh, inside, the, inside the socket. And so this all connects up. You can see the, uh, the wand I disconnected, so it stopped. The pack keeps running. So basically you can run the pack without a wand, uh, but you can't really run the wand uh, without the pack. Uh, you have to get power and it has to have the uh, uh, serial link. Uh, between the Arduino in here and the Arduino uh, in the pack. You can see the, uh, everything else still works. You know, you can lift the lid off and you still get the inner cyclotron. So all the sound effects, everything keeps running. The wand just, you know, it's disconnected. Okay, so I put the bumper back on. I'll show uh, while the wand is still disconnected. Uh, we still have the standard ion arm switch. We'll power the pack on. So that still does its thing. So you can use that if you want. And let's see what happens if I plug the wand back in. Okay, so this is reconnected. Uh, the wand is in an off state, but the pack is still running. And there we go. I just, you just have to give it like three seconds uh, in between uh, reconnecting the wand. Wand automatically uh, connects back to the pack. Pack knows that the wand is there. It's still running, keeps running. 
the wand, I can now come in here uh, to the activate switch. Now the wand is powered up. I've got all my uh, standard sequences. If I shut that off, since the wand is connected now and the pack knows it, there we go. Now I've rejoined uh, functionality, so when I shut down the wand, it also shuts down the pack. So I think one more thing I'll show is just how much uh, how much of an improvement this is on audio. As soon as the uh, pack electronics get upgraded, I have a much cleaner signal coming from the wave trigger directly into my audio amp. My audio amp is only putting out supposedly 15 watts. I have two speakers. I have one mounted uh, sort of right back here behind the... Um, behind the Alice frame. There's my Dragon Con sticker. Uh, and the other one is in the standard location at the top of the pack. And this is, this is at full volume uh, for the pack. firing sequence. Yeah, I don't know if you hear it, but the pack is rattling. Uh, if there's any loose bits on this thing, that is enough to have it shaking. So that is with the volume all the way up. So needless to say, uh, just little three inch, uh, 15 watt speakers uh, run from a stereo amp. That is plenty of power. It is plenty loud. Uh, it is. It, it can be heard outdoors uh, for certain. Indoors, it's gonna be more than loud. The, um, the, there is no need for a vibration motor in this thing. Uh, once that once that audio kicks in and you've got the the idle loop going and even some music, that whole pack is going to be shaking. And when you run the firing sequence, you're going to feel it. And there's just enough uh, from the full range speaker, uh, which is real tiny. I think it's like an inch, inch and a half. Uh, it's really not that big, but it's running off the built-in amp for the wave trigger. It is enough to vibrate the uh, wand itself, so when you're firing, you feel it. And then the pack, of course, uh, gets its own rumble. So I have taken out the rumble motors uh, that came stock. There's no need to have those, in my opinion. So that's the uh, last thing I wanted to show.